Hello everyone and welcome to our tutorial series about using the Unreal Engine 4. This is step one. We're going to go over the basics of getting started. And so we're going to be assuming that um, you have nothing and we're going to work all the way up to getting the, in or getting the game up and running um, in the editor so you can start working on it. So we're going to cover installing Git, Visual Studio, downloading the engine, and cloning and starting to work on your game project. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get Git installed on our computers. And so I'll put the links down in the, the description um, for both Mac and Windows users. Uh, but basically you'll just um, go to github.com and you'll be able to download their client. And so you can see here, um, you just click that button and let it download. I already have it installed so I won't really go through the installation process but once you get it installed you'll get uh, two programs you'll get the github one right here and you also get the shell and we'll primarily be using the shell um, in this tutorial I want to take a second to go over a few basic git commands um, as you can see on the slide here uh, these are the commands that you'll use uh, most of the time, they'll probably be able to cover around 80% of the situations you come in contact with. So the first one is git clone, um, and then you'll also add the URL for the repository that you're trying to get. This command is used when you initially want to um, get the project that you're going to be working on. You'll use the git clone. Um, from there, there are two other kind of like types of commands you're going to be using. Um, the next is git pull. And what this does is if someone else on your team has made a change um, on the code, you'll be able to use git pull to be able to pull those changes into your local copy and you'll be able to see them and see what they added. Um, the next three commands, I kind of group them together as one. Um, this is for getting your changes up into the repository for other people to be able to access. And so you're going to use the git add dash capital A command this is going to add all of the changes and the files uh, from your local copy to the repository. Um, the next one is the git commit dash m and then some commit message uh, to describe sort of the changes you made so people can kind of track what happened. And then finally after that you'll use git push which will then push everything, all your changes up onto the internet for the other people to be able to then pull. Next we're going to want to install Visual Studios. And I know Unreal Engine 4 comes with Visual Studio Express for free, um, but Microsoft actually gives uh, the professional version of Visual Studios away to students for free. And so that all you need is a .edu um, email address and you'll be able to get this. Um, I'll put the link to this website down in the description, but it's basically called dreamspark.com. And if you come down right here, it's you can see, you click learn more, and you'll be able to see all the products available for free for students. And so they have tons of different options here. You can scroll over and see some of them. But we're interested in this one right here, um, the, the professional version of Visual Studios. So basically, you can just click that and select uh, the way you want to install it. I'm not quite sure the difference between these but you want to then have to click this uh, verify button and right now I'm not currently logged into my Microsoft account so it would bring you here and this is where you'll just type in your school's email address um, again it has to be a .edu email address but once you type that in you just click the button and it will send you an email and in that email will be a link to kind of validate that you are indeed actually a student and from there you'll be able to install Visual Studios no problem. Now we are going to want to get access to the Unreal Engine 4 and so um, if you just go to their website um, and I am making the assumption that you have already created an account what you're going to do is just sign in and um, let's see once you're signed in you want to go to your account page and then click on profile and then from here you can see all this information 
but right down there there's the github account name you're going to want to add your github username there this allows you to access the unreal engine 4's source code on github so again just enter your github username where this red box circled and then you should be good to go and once you're done with that um, we're going to want to then go to GitHub, and so you can just type in right here. I'll put the URL down in the description again for all of these things. Um, you want to go on to go to Epic Games uh, GitHub repository, and so just navigate there. And so now here you can see here's the engine, and over here on the right hand side is you can copy the URL for this repository. So you just click the little clipboard. Then we're going to want to open our shell and we're going to clone it, but first we're going to want to navigate to where we want to do it and, you know, this spot's as good as any. So if you remember the command, it's git clone and then the URL, so then you can just copy and paste it. And then it'll start to clone it. And this is going to take a while, so I'll just pause the video here and I'll resume it once this is all done. Okay, so once this is finished cloning, you can then just go ahead and close the shell and then open up File Explorer and navigate to where you cloned the engine. So I did it in the GitHub folder, which is in Documents, which is where it will probably be by default, and look for the setup.bat file. So this batch file um, will help set up the engine, and so you're just going to want to run that. It'll take a while, so again, I'm going to pause the video and I'll just resume once this is done. Once that is finished, now we're going to want to go up to the generate uh, project files.bat and we're going to do the same thing. Just run that. Um, again, I'll pause it. It takes a while and I'll resume once this is finished. Now that we have finished that, um, the next thing we want to do is set up our engine uh, to be able to work with Steamworks. So I would just do a Google search for Steamworks um, SDK, and there it is, this is the first thing. Um, and then you can just click on any of those links on the right. What we're looking for is this archive file right here. And we're looking for version um, 1.3.0. Uh, this is the one that the engine's currently built to support. We can, you're able to change it if you want to. I just keep using this version because it's simple. Um, so once you extract the files, you're going to copy and paste this SDK file. So you're going to copy it. And next, you're going to want to navigate back to where you cloned your engine. And you're going to want to open up the engine, go down to source, and then go down to third party, and then go scroll to the bottom, and you're looking for Steamworks. There it is. Open up that one, see it's supporting that version. Just delete that SDK and paste the one we just downloaded from Steamworks. So now your engine will be set up to work with Steam uh, if you decide to make an online game. All right, so close that and let's see. I didn't want to close the file explorer, so go back to where um, we cloned the engine. And then you can see now that we have the solution file. And that's, that was generated from. Uh, steps before. Um, open those and it will launch in Visual Studios and um, it'll take a second to load. So what we're going to be doing here is now we're going to build the engine so it will actually be able to run and support games. So right click on the UE4 right here and set as startup project. I just do this to make sure that you know I'm actually build the correct one. Oh, but you can double specify here and make sure you build UE4. Okay, so this build is actually going to take a really long time. Um, I'm going to pause and I'll resume the video once it's finished. All right, and then once it's finished being built, um, we can then just go ahead and close this. 
We are now ready to start working on our actual game project. So, um, again, go to GitHub, and for this uh, tutorial, I'll just clone a project I'm currently working on. So, if you're working on another project with a team, go to their GitHub page. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to copy the URL with a little clipboard, like we did with the engine, and then we're going to open up the Git shell. And then wait for that to load. Now once that's open, we're just going to clone the project into where we can clone it wherever we want to. Um, again, the command is git space clone space, and then you can just copy and paste the URL and then hit enter. I'll pause the video while this is cloning so you guys don't have to sit through and watch this. Once the project has finished cloning, you can go ahead and just close the shell. We're going to want to open up File Explorer and navigate to where we cloned the game project. I did it in GitHub again, and you can do it wherever. But we're looking for this U project uh, file. We're going to right, want to right click on it and then select the option for Generate Project Files. And then just wait for it to create all the files we need. And then we're just going to ensure right click on again and select engine version and make sure that it's selected to the, um, the engine that we just built from the source code. And let that build. Um, we're going to want to use this engine because when we use the engine that's built from source code, it gives us um, the greatest control over being able to see what the engine's doing and be able to step down into the source code. So open up the solution for the game, and as you can see here, um, we're going to actually want to set this game project as the new startup uh, project. And then um, let's just be safe and build the solution. Again, I'm going to pause the video while this is being built. So after it's done being built, um, we can go up here. I'm actually going to switch this to development editor um, and then switch this to Win64 just so it will build a little bit faster. And now we can actually run the, the game. So just click the green arrow. Uh, it's going to have to rebuild a few things. While it's building, um, I like to talk about some of the, uh, the build solutions from that drop down we just saw. So there are kind of like three main ones. There's debug, debug game, and development. And so pretty much the trade-offs are between um, control of the code and being able to see a lot and versus optimization. So debug being the least optimized but giving you the most ability to step down into the source code and even down into the engine code. Development being um, giving you the least control but the most optimized. So depending on what you're doing, you'll switch in between those options. I tend to like to stay in debug because I like to be able to step down and trust what the code's telling me. Um, but if you're just primarily doing like level design and you know more aesthetic things, you can get away with using the development mode because you won't have much need to step down and see what's happening. So now that the uh, the editor is being built, you can see right here, um, this is what the editor looks like in the game. As you can see in the bottom, it's compiling shaders. And so that's why everything is this like gray textile stuff. But once that finish is compiling all of them, you'll start to see some color pop up. Let's see, here you go now. And now everything's uh, set up and good to go. So. Um, hopefully this tutorial was helpful. Um, I always thought that there's a lot. While there's a lot of tutorials out there, none of them really like consolidated it all into like one thing from like start to finish. So hopefully this helped. Um, and I hope to see you all back in our part two of our tutorial series. See ya.